possible for him to hold his head high as a proud member of the Métis Nation. And Gabriel will... The title of his talk is Harry Daniels and the Daniels Case, a son's, son's perspective on the man, his legacy, and vision for a united Métis Nation. Please welcome Gabriel Daniel. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. I normally don't do a lot of uh, public speaking, so I'm going to be kind of all over the place. I haven't written, written anything down, but uh, I'd like to acknowledge everyone here on the panel, some very dear friends of my father um, and my mother and my sister. Glad that I can see them here in town. I, as you're saying, I live in Winnipeg. Uh, Actually, where I live in Winnipeg right now, it's the River Heights area, and that's where uh, <clears throat> the Grant, where the Grant Park Mall is. I can't remember the name of that that area at the time, but that's where Métis people used to live in that area, and they were pushed out. And I and I live where they were, so I, I don't know. I always th I think that's kind of uh... anyway. About my father, um, I guess if you knew him, um, like any stories I tell you, any words I have, I, I, that isn't, it isn't, uh, um, it doesn't do its justice. He was a, he was a larger than life figure. And I was very proud of him. Um, but I have to say though, as a young man, uh, not growing up with them, I was always angry. Angry had an anger that uh, I didn't get the time with them that I wanted as a son. So, as life went on, as I got to be an adult, I, I learned and accepted that he had to be the way he was to do what he achieved, and. You know, what he did in 82, getting the Métis in the Constitution, uh, he, I, I know he always felt, as proud as he was of it, he always felt um, it was incomplete. Like, it, it wasn't, like, yeah, we're recognized as a people, but we weren't in 91-24. So I know that always bothered him. So when he passed, and I got a call to um, fill in for him, I was... It was an easy, very easy decision because I knew what it meant to him and I knew what it meant to uh, the uniting our people. And uniting our people, I think, is, um, in my opinion, is that a very sad state because we have some Métis, not, I'm not saying all Métis, some Métis who, and it's my personal opinion as well, that we have all these mixed blood people all over across the country. And I don't feel, if they're not from the Red River, then we cannot exclude them to being in our club. Because we were, we came from nothing. So to tell others that they're not welcome to be with us. Because I was flipping through this and there's some, Scholars, I'm not a scholar, I'm just, I'm a, like you said, I'm a carpenter, I'm a, an actor. Um, you know, everyone's got opinions, everyone's a, everyone's a genius nowadays, and that's, that's fine. But, um, if we're not focusing on uniting, like, the government does a good enough job trying to keep us apart, we don't need to do the work for them. So, anyhow, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use up my whole 20 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know. I should have wrote I should have wrote stuff down. But uh, I don't know. I'm proud of my father, and uh, to all you critics who are against the case, or oh, you know what? You know what? I, I do want to say something. 
When I went down to the Supreme Court for the uh, hearing, the thing that that pissed me off that our own people are there intervening it. <laughs> I don't know. I, is, it, is it money? Is that what the problem is? Like, is it, oh man, there's going to be not enough money for everybody? Like, if that's your mentality, then get the hell out of here and go do something else. Because if you're not in it for all of us, and you're not in it for the betterment of all of our people, then I don't even want to talk to you. I don't want to know you. I don't want you to represent us. Like, I'm a carpenter. I'll make my own money. I don't care. I'll get my own way. Uh, sorry, I'm a little emotional. I just, uh, every time I talk with my dad, I, I get this way, so. Um, thank you for having me. Can I ask you? Yeah. How did my, how did my name get on the court case? Yeah. Um, it was Dale Gibson who called me, um, and uh, he said, look, you know, your dad died. I was like, yeah. Um, he said, you know, this the Daniels case, it's, it's, you know, it's happening. And I, and I, knew, I knew him and Dwight uh, were talking about it back in the day, but I didn't know the, like, how far it was and how, I didn't even know he filed it, actually. I know, he, I remember him talking about it, but. Anyway, uh, yeah, he called me and said, look, we need you or someone, if it isn't you, to, um, to take his place. So I was like, okay, and then he told me about the case. I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure, man. If, we're, if it's about bringing people together and completing, um, getting us in the Constitution then, uh, to fulfill my dad's legacy, then yes, Absolutely. Um, if logically, for me, anything that makes sense in terms of um, uh, negotiating for land or bringing people together, I'm all for it. Um, and I do want to say one other thing um, to the critics and the other politicians who don't agree with my father's vision. Um, and that's fine. but. Like I said, I don't want anything from anybody. I make my own living. I don't care. But what I do want from my father is his rightful place. Um, you know, to be up there alongside Louis. That's what I want. And, uh, and I guarantee you, if Harry and Louis were here with me, they would agree. 